Hey, listen, we're about ready to get on board to visit a Farm Direct relationship in Nicaragua. And we want to get you on board, too, here on Bean Basics on the road. Oh, hey there. Welcome to Bean Basics with Bob and Michelle, and uh, welcome to the Miami International Airport, <laughs> and uh, welcome to the friendly skies of Avianca. Um, Michelle and I are getting ready to go back to Nicaragua. This is a farm direct relationship we've had for uh, many years. Three. But, three years, but we haven't been able to get back for two years. Uh, first, because of COVID, and then some political strife, and then some, you know, uh, personal stuff inside of our family and that kind of thing. But we're really happy that we're about ready to embark on that particular journey. And uh, the relationship we have in Nicaragua is in a area in a town called Inotega. And the actual farm that we're visiting, the grower, the producer, uh, is El Recreo. And that is owned by uh, Leanna and Carlos Ferry. Uh, today we're traveling with uh, Nathan Havey. We're traveling with our photographer, Kim Zanou. Zanou? Zanou. Zanou. I always get it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> always, always get it wrong. Sorry, and then uh, also um, Miriam, daughter of Leanna and Carlos, and her husband uh, Hector. And we're basically going to go back and uh, see some of the progress made. Uh, you know, we're using about 250,000 pounds a year from this particular farm. Uh, one thing we're excited about seeing is that they have uh, planted uh, 120,000. Uh, new coffee bushes. Uh, that's going to equate in about two years to 120,000 pounds of new coffee. So, you know, one of the nice things about El Recreo is that they are growing as we are growing, right? So our poundage increases every year. But what I get really excited about yeah. is why they could plant 120,000 new plants with confidence. Well, sure. I mean, uh, we have uh, had this farm direct relationship. Part of the component of that is that we're paying a, a fair price for that uh, coffee and a fair price in consideration of these things, right? Uh, how are they treating their people, right? Are they using child labor? Uh, are they paying their people the maximum they can pay as housing, clothing, food, things of this nature? We're asking our direct farm relationships to participate in those kinds of things. And then from a planet perspective, uh, how they're treating the soil, whether it's shade grown, whether they're composting and so on and so forth. And then from a community perspective, what are their investments in a community? I mean, they do have uh, a kindergarten through fourth grade school on site. They have a technical school for uh, small farmers in the area so that they can learn more about how to produce such fine coffee. Uh, but then also the thing we want to check up on is the Mujercitas. Right. You know, the thing about this farm is they were doing great things before we came along, before right. they knew that they'd be able to sell their coffee year over year and what kind of price they'd be able to get for it. So these are, these, our partners are very committed to the welfare of their community. But because of our investment and that they know year over year that we're going to be there with them, they've been able to really ramp up on steroids, things like their health clinic and the Mujercitas, which is a mentoring program for young women starting around age nine all the way up to age 15 to really help keep them in school, fighting that sort of cultural headwind that might throw them off track with their education. So we can't wait to see how that is all going. That's right, that's right. And you know, Michelle brings up a great point, and that is once we establish a farm direct relationship, it's implied that it's a lifetime relationship. And so what that means is that the grower can begin to make future investments. You know, often a grower, uh, doesn't have that luxury because they have to spot sell their coffee and they don't really know whether they're going to get some dollars, no dollars, uh, and so on for their coffee in any given year. But with this relationship, they can uh, rely on that. So uh, we're very excited to check back in and check back up uh, with the farm. And uh, hopefully uh, you'll stay tuned for future episodes of Bean Basics on the road uh, because we're going to be coming to you straight from the farm. And we're going to be talking about uh, uh, various parts of the farm, various parts of growing coffee, and of course the relationships we have there. And so uh, as much as we like to talk about coffee equipment and coffee brewing methods and all that kind of thing on uh, Bean Basics, one of our, uh, for Michelle and I, our raison d'etre is to make it possible that Big Bee Coffee can have 
50% of its coffee farm direct by 2023 and 100% by 2028. And that just involves uh, a mission to take care of uh, people, take care of the planet, and invest in the community. The last thing I want to say about this is one of the beautiful things about a farm direct relationship, and there are so many wonderful benefits. We're not going to go into them all right now, but one of the beautiful things is that when we drink a coffee at Bigby Coffee, we're going to be able to, you're going to be able to have uh, a name for a coffee, meaning uh, uh, it comes from the El Recreo estate. You're going to have uh, a face for that coffee. In other words, you'll be able to see Liana and uh, Liana and Carlos Ferry, and then a, a place. It's always uh, in coffee. Everybody knows the place. Hey, we're buying Nicaraguan coffee, but in this particular case, we get to narrow it right down to Inotega and uh, the beautiful mountains that uh, surround it. So. Uh, I think we got to go now before they make me put my mask back on. <laughs> but before we go, we do want to leave you with this, and that is... When you love the world. The world will love you right back. Hey, thanks for joining us. For future episodes, click the subscribe button. Bean Basics is brought to you by OneBigIslandInSpace.com with two Gs.